Welcome to SVR IAS Academy. Comeonindia.com is our website. In this Environment and Ecology online video lecture, you are going to learn about biodiversity hotspots in the world and in India. So first, you should know what is biodiversity hotspot. What is the criteria used to classify an area as a biodiversity hotspot? And with respect to Indian context, we are going to discuss in detail about the various biodiversity hotspots in India. Just look at the image. The green color shows biodiversity hotspot in the world. The biodiversity hotspots represent just 2.3 percentage of the earth surface, but it has up to 50 percentage of the organism. Now you can understand the importance of biodiversity hotspot. In India, you can see the Western Ghats, Sri Lanka and Himalayas, almost entire Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Philippines, some parts of Japan, in Australia, the Western and Eastern parts. When you come to Africa, the entire Horn of Africa, Madagascar, and southern part of the Africa and here also the coast of Gulf of Guinea and almost the coast of entire Mediterranean Sea and the west coast of the North and South America and the eastern part of the South America where Brazil and Argentina meet. So these are the biodiversity hotspots in the world. So biodiversity hotspot can be defined as a biogeographic region. It is the biogeographic region that has significant reservoir of biodiversity and it is threatened with destruction. Two points you must write while defining biodiversity hotspot. It is still a significant reservoir of biodiversity. Still biodiversity is maximum in biodiversity hotspot. But why it is called as hotspot? It is under threat with the destruction. What is the purpose of declaring such areas as a biodiversity hotspot? It implies two meanings. Still the region has huge biodiversity and lot of organisms live there. And second it is facing human threat with the destruction. So it needs to be protected. That's why areas with the maximum biodiversity are declared as biodiversity hotspot. Let's go back to the image. Here in this area you might be knowing that Amazon forest is located. Amazon river and Amazon forest is located. It is not classified as a biodiversity hotspot. Still, it has a maximum biodiversity because it is not facing threat with destruction. So, the main objective of classifying the biodiversity hotspot is to identify those regions of the world where world attention is needed to address the biodiversity loss and to get some investments into the biodiversity conservation. Whenever we discuss biodiversity hotspot, you must remember one personality that is Norman Myers. Norman Myers developed the concept called biodiversity hotspot in 1988 to identify the tropical forest hotspots. He used two criteria based on the planet endemism level, based on planet plant endemism and serious habitat loss. What do you mean by endemism? Endemism means is an ecological state in that the species unique to a particular location or geographical area. So some plants are located only in a particular area means this is called as plant endemism. Now let's discuss some facts about biodiversity hotspots across the globe. At present there are 
35 biodiversity hotspots have been identified in the world. Most of the biodiversity hotspots occur in the tropical forest. Each and every point is important for the prelims examination. So please remember, so 35 biodiversity hotspots are there and mostly in the tropical forest region. Biodiversity hotspots refer just 2.3 percentage of the earth land surface but it contains nearly 50 percentage of the world's endemic plant species and 42 percentage of the all terrestrial vertebrates. Now you can understand the importance of conserving these biological or you can say biodiversity hotspots. Now let's discuss the criteria used to classify a region as biodiversity hotspot. The region must meet two criteria. It must contain at least 1500 species of vascular planet, plants that is more than 0.5 percentage of the world's total vascular plants as an endemic. Endemic means that we already discussed the plants that are unique to a particular place and the plants found nowhere in the world except in the biodiversity hotspot. Second criteria used is the region should have lost 70 percentage or more than that of its original native habitat. So the region has lost more than 70 percentage of its original native habitat. Remaining habitat also under threat of destruction. So we need to conserve the remaining biodiversity hotspot. Now let's discuss about biodiversity hotspots in India. According to the 1994 IUCN assessment, India contained 2.9 percentage of IUCN designated threatened species. The threatened species includes Asiatic lion, Bengal tiger, Indian white rumped vulture. Indian white rumped vulture especially faces extinction because of the ingestion of dead bodies of diclofenac treated cattle. We also provided a separate video lecture on the diclofenac and the decline of vultures. So go to the environment and ecology online video lecture section where you can find the video lecture. Now we are going to discuss about hotspots in India. One is Himalayas. Himalayas means here it includes entire Indian Himalayan region that falls in Pakistan, Tibet, Nepal, Bhutan, China and Myanmar as well. So the entire Himalayan region is classified as biodiversity hotspot. Second hotspot is Indo-Burma. Indo-Burma means it includes entire northeastern region except Assam and Andaman Nicobar Islands and parts of the Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia and southern China also classified in the Indo-Burma region. Third is Sunda lands. Sunda lands includes Nicobar group of islands and also Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei and Philippines. Fourth type is the Western Ghats and Sri Lanka. This region includes entire Western Ghats and Sri Lanka. Now we are going to discuss in detail about Western Ghats and Himalayas. We have already provided a separate video lecture on the Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats comparison. Western Ghats is located along the western edge of the peninsular India and Western Ghats are also known as Sayadri Mountains. Sayadri Mountains located from starting from Gujarat and ends till Tamil Nadu. Western Ghats receives maximum rainfall and it runs parallel to the west coast of India and the distance about more than 1600 kilometers strip of forest in the states of Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. The Western Ghats region have moist deciduous forest type and also rainforest. It can be asked in the prelims examination that is what kind of forest is there in the Western Ghats. 
so the moist deciduous forest and rainforest western ghats shows high species diversity and shows high level of endemism almost there are more than 6000 vascular plants belongs to 2500 genera can be spotted in this hot spot so out of 6000 vascular plants more than 3000 vascular plants are endemic to this region so we have already discussed the criteria according to the first criteria the region should have at least 1500 endemic vascular plants here western ghats region has more than 3000 endemic species most of the world's spices like uh, black pepper and cardamom have their origin in the western ghats nearly 77% of the amphibians and 62% of the reptile species found in the western ghat and they are, they are not found anywhere in the world so only found in this western ghats region nearly over 60% of the reptiles and amphibians are completely endemic in this hot spot so this biodiversity nowhere found in this world and is under severely threatened with extinction because of the human activities so far we discussed some important points on the western ghats which can be asked in the prelims examination now we are going to discuss about eastern ghats and important facts on this topic Eastern Ghats includes Bhutan, northeastern India, south, central and eastern Nepal region. In this image you can see the Eastern Ghats. So in the Eastern Ghats mainly three countries are Eastern Himalayas. In the Eastern Himalayas three countries are coming. One is India, second is Nepal, third is Bhutan. This region is geologically young. in geography we discussed about himalayan formation and the region shows high altitudinal variation from the base of the mountain to if you go higher the number of species and diversity varies today the himalayan mountain system has the world's highest peaks is home to world's highest peaks like mount everest and k2 according to the estimates there are 10000 species of plants are there in the eastern himalayas out of that nearly 1/3 are considered as endemic 1/3 means more than 4000 vascular plants are considered as endemic and found nowhere in the world some endemic birds in the eastern himalayas are himalayan quail chir present western tragophan are found nowhere in the world only in the eastern himalayas apart from these birds some of the asia's largest and most endangered birds also found here such as himalayan vulture white bellied heron are found here eastern himalayan hotspot has nearly 163 globally threatened species which includes one horned rhinoceros wild asian water buffalo wild asian water buffalo one horned rhinoceros as already we discussed two horned rhinoceros are found in africa whereas one horned rhinoceros were found in asia in the eastern himalayan region relict dragonfly is found is an endangered species and other species of relict dragonfly found only in japan so far we discussed about endemic vascular plants and fauna of the eastern himalayan region so let's prepare thoroughly on the biodiversity hotspot in the globe and in india it's one of the important area for the mains and prelims examination every year so prepare well and all the best